Who can tell me? What is this? That was my favorite sociology class this morning. Today I got a little story for you. We're going to start chapter three, socialization. But before I give you any notes or information on socialization, we're going to talk about the process a little bit. I'm going to do that by telling a story. A long time ago, I was, uh, I was in Israel. I was in Jerusalem on one of the hills, a place called Yad Vashem. And I struck up a conversation with an individual that told me a, a story that I thought was a very interesting story. And I guess it all starts, I guess it all starts with the lost tribes of Israel. A long time ago in history, there were groups of Israelis that left Israel and some of them are, got lost. They're called the lost tribes of Israel. We don't know where they went. And, they lost contact throughout history. And one tribe in particular had something with them. It was a picture of this I showed you a minute ago. This is what, if you guys saw Raiders of the Lost Ark, this is what Harrison Ford or his character was looking for in the movie. This is considered, Christians consider this the source of power on earth, the source of heaven's power on earth. But anyway. It was lost. One of the tribes that took it, we think, took it to Ethiopia, or some people surmise that it ended up in Ethiopia. Anyway, to make a long story longer, I guess this gave some Ethiopians ties to the, to the Jewish community in Israel. And So during the 19th century, there were groups uh, from Ethiopia that, uh, that wanted to move to Israel. And they probably wanted to do that because they had a much, much better chance of, of becoming more productive in society and probably an easier life. I would, I would surmise that the subsistence society base of Ethiopia would be a little tougher than the industrial-based economy uh, in Israel. So anyway, there were vast numbers of people, Ethiopians, that wanted to move to Israel. Uh, this was a bone of contention amongst many Israelis. And many people believe that these people in Ethiopia were not really Israelis. They're not really Jews. And others thought that, yes, they were. So anyway, that, that was a bone of contention in the country. It caused a bit of a split. And other issues were the, were the ability of Ethiopians to integrate into Israeli society. Many of the Ethiopians, or the vast majority, couldn't speak the language, um, couldn't, were, were illiterate, and would have a difficult time surviving in Israel. This created all kinds of distress in the country for a long time. And, uh, came to a head in one of the, the prime ministers at the time, and uh, Yitzhak Rabid, I believe was his name, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, it's my, my Hebrew is not very good. Um, he was a commando, he was tough as a boiled owl, that fella, and uh, 27 years in the military, he was prime minister of the country, and it was during a time when the country was deciding whether or not they were going to allow Ethiopians to come into Israel. And this prime minister was going to make a statement on the six o'clock news and everybody or many people thought, there's no way that this guy, tough as he is, is going to let anybody just march into the country. And I think he shocked a lot of people. I was told his announcement encompassed the, uh, the SS St. Louis. He said in his speech to the country, do you remember the SS St. Louis? And I know those of you who have taken sociology from me, or taking my sociology course, know the story of the SS St. Louis. It was the boat just previous to World War II going into full swing that, that left the Netherlands uh, with a, a thousand, I think just under a thousand uh, members of the Jewish community on board 
and they left Europe and they wanted to, to get out of Dodge. And they sailed to the Caribbean and no country in the Caribbean would, would allow them citizenship. So they sailed to the United States and when they landed into Ellis Island they, they were refused uh, citizenship as well and the, the boat then sailed up to Halifax Pier 21 where they again were refused citizenship and they had nowhere left to go. So they went right back to the same dock they left and, and this time the Nazis were waiting for them and, and uh, anyway they were not treated very good when they arrived. The Prime Minister in discussion of the Ethiopians in the evening news said as, it's, as, it, was, as it was told to me to remember the SS St. Louis and they started the integration of Ethiopians into Israeli society. Now, here's what I want you to think about as students of sociology. Think about the story I just told, and think about whether it will be easy or whether it will be difficult to integrate a group of people from Ethiopia into a, group of, into a country in the Middle East. A subsistent society, people who, who were immersed in the culture of a subsistent society are now being, are now gravitating towards an industrial society. And I want you to think about the process. Do you think that would create difficulty? And if so, how would the difficulties be created? What, there was obviously language barriers and cultural barriers, but what else could you think of that would affect society? Anyway, that's what I want you to do today. Think about that. How, how a society, how a group from Ethiopia, a subsistence culture, could move into an industrialized culture. What would be the issues that developed? And this, boys and girls, is the start of your lesson in socialization.